What is normal sexual behaviour for children and what's not? Well, it depends on the age and stage of your child, and of course all children are very different. But there are some principles we can apply when deciding whether a child's sexual behaviour is expected and is age-appropriate exploration, or whether it's something we should be worried about. We're going to focus on teenagers, young people at secondary school roughly aged 11 to 18. Now that's a really big age range and we see lots of individual differences within this group. So what are the things that we would see as typical sexual behaviours for this age group from a child development perspective? Most children will see the onset of puberty and physical changes in their body during this time. And for many teenagers, uh, changes in hormone levels will lead to a more focused set of sexual thoughts and feelings during adolescence. In privacy, teenagers may explore their body and their developing sexuality on their own. And for many teenagers, there will be a healthy interest in what sex is, often seen through conversations, interactions with peers and online behaviour. But in the teenage years, we also often see the start of the expression of sexuality. So teenagers will often talk with peers about who they are attracted to. Pop stars, movie stars, peers. Over time, they may move to flirting behaviour with those roughly the same age as them. We may see dating behaviour, having a partner, kissing, intimate touch with peers, and for around half of young people by the age of 16, some form of sexual activity. Supporting all of this is challenging, and it can be emotionally hard to think of your 14-year-old hormonal teenager when you still want to remember them as a small child. But our job as parents is to help ensure that our teenage children have positive experiences that get them ready to navigate the adult world of relationships when they become a young adult themselves. And as with other age groups, you may need to put down boundaries and discuss your concerns with your child if their sexual behaviour is inappropriate. For instance, if it interferes with their social development or they misunderstand social contexts or norms, if it impacts on other people or if it persists after adults have asked them to stop or maybe because it's causing them distress or unhappiness. But there are sexual behaviours that, that also cause harm to other people. And that's because of lack of consent or power differences. Um, sometimes it's about coercion or force. And these are indicators that more specific support and safety planning is needed immediately. And you'll need to speak to your child's school or perhaps to social work for help with immediate next steps. Supporting teenagers in their social and sexual development isn't easy but you're not on your own. There are great resources out there and you can always speak to professionals who know your child, like their teachers or your GP, or if you want, you can also seek out anonymous advice through helpline lines like Parentline and the Stop It Now helpline. At the end of the day, it's the responsibility of all of us to ensure our children grow up safely, to become healthy, emotionally mature, responsible adults, who in turn can have rich and fulfilling relationships throughout the rest of their lives.